but I'm Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. Uh, what we're going to do today is actually we've got someone coming for a lesson. Um, never met them before, never seen their dog. Not the dog isn't from me. So this is someone who's come to me with a dog that they want to improve. Now I don't know whether it's a good dog or a bad dog, a cheeky dog or a naughty dog or anything else. So we're just going to give you an insight into how we how we do a lesson with someone and and how we adjust our sort of our training to to suit the specific person and the the specific needs and requirements of their dog. So let's hope they um they're a nice person with a nice dog, and uh, you guys you guys all get to learn something. Hi, Georgia. I'm Charlie. I'm Georgia. Nice Welcome to, to Mordor Gun Dogs. Okay. Um, so Georgia's here for a, a lesson with her one-year-old. Yeah, Cocker Swan. Cocker Spaniel, yeah. boy or a girl? Boy. A boy. So one-year-old. And what colour is he? Black. So one-year-old boy. And you've been doing quite a lot of training with him. Yeah, You're hoping right. that he's going to become a picking up dog or beating yeah, dog or a bit of a dog, picking up dog. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at, uh, what's he called? It's called Jet. Jet. So we're going to have a look at what George has been doing with Jet. So you can't really see with the camera, but George has opened the crate and Jet has sat there and waited. He hasn't barged out. So that's instantly a good start from our point of view. Someone turns up here quite, you know, someone turns up quite a regular thing. Oh, I just want my dog to come back when it's cool. And as they open the boot of the car, the, the dog's like fighting to come out of the back of the car. And they're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. And all they're saying to me is, oh, I just want him to come back when it's cool. They can't even make the dog wait in the back of the car, which is a really simple exercise. Um, so the chances of them getting to do other things are are just massively reduced. So we're, one of my common sayings, Georgia, is, is if you look after the dog pennies, the dog pounds look after themselves. Yeah. Dog pennies are simple things like making your young dog wait at the wait at the door of the of the of the of the car, um, at the door of a house, at the door of a kennel. Once you get them out on on a lead, you know he's come out. You've put him on the lead. Yeah, he's had a little hug of your leg quite cocker like they're yeah. going to do that but then very quickly you know he settled down you've calmed him down he's sitting there and he's eager to go but he's sitting there and he's calm this is the yeah. sort of like this is the sort of stuff that's really important to concentrate on again what we see people doing is a dog comes out and the dog's pulling the owner everywhere and they're just worried about shutting the cage and shutting the boot and i'm like leave the bloody car alone we're like miles away from anyone no one's gonna steal the car concentrate on the dog so when the dog comes out, get the dog under control first. Get him in a calm. He doesn't necessarily have to be sitting, but just like he is now, a calm, just standing, relaxed. It's not my decision to make. That's the sort of the, the way to go forward. And then we'll worry about the car later. And to be honest, on a boiling hot day like today, yeah. we're probably better off just leaving it open. Yeah. That looks nothing like a pheasant. No. Never, ever will. So it doesn't matter. It's the principle of them going out, picking it up, bringing it back to you. Going out, picking it up, bringing it back to you. And that's what we're we're really kind of concentrate on so uh what i'll get you to do is just with your canvas dummy just show me some of the things you might you've done with him whether he's steady or whether you can do a memory with him just do something here that you might do at home in training just so i can see kind of what sort of things you've been doing with him and what he does okay. on the lead off the lead just pretend i'm not here pretend pretend you're just at home and you're doing a little bit of training with him Good boy. Yeah. Sit. Ah, sit. Okay. So, uh, for a one-year-old cocker, I would say it's pretty good. He's steady. It wasn't a complicated retrieve. I yeah. probably would have upped my game and oh, yeah. thrown it a bit further. But it was a. He he sat there. He waited. He went and got it. He brought back. Yeah. He did a little circle of you. Um, and then, but then you got him to sit and you're, 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 you're encouraging him to sit. I can see that you've been working at getting him to sit. It's not going to happen overnight. This is, yeah. this is a constant kind of thing I'm saying to people, you know, they, they're like, oh, how do I fix that? Well, it's just time. Okay. If you keep doing what you're doing, keep encouraging him to sit. He's just going to get better and better and better at it. It's, um, there's a few things with cockers. That, so sometimes if I've got a cocker, I'm trying to get them to do a good delivery and his is probably better than the the, uh, uh, the sort of dog I'm talking about, but I'll sometimes let them just come in and jump up. Yeah. So I'll let them just come in, bump, put their feet on mine, because then they'll not do this circling thing. Yeah. They'll come in, they'll jump up, and I'll take the dummy. They'll come in, they'll jump up, I'll take the dummy, and I'll repeat that over and over, and then one day, as they're coming in, just before they jump up, I take a pace towards them, or a pace back, and say sit. Okay. And their mindset is then not like, wiggle, wiggle, squirm, squirm, I'm going to be silly. It's just, they're about to go, boom, mummy, look what I've got. And then, and then actually you can get them to sit. So, so that's, you know, it's not, I'm not saying you, it's definitely the thing to do with him, but that's just something else to think about. Don't be shy of letting them, 
letting them jump up because they are prone to wanting to jump up. And if that means he comes straight in and puts his feet up and gives it to you, yeah, you know, that's better than him getting in the habit of squiggling and squirming. Okay, can you do a memory with him? Yeah. So do you want to just drop it here and walk him away? Do you want to put him on this lead or are you happy to have him off the lead? Okay, so just chuck it down here somewhere. And then walk him away. So George has just dropped a dummy. She's asked him to walk away at heel. So he's got to remember where that is. He's keen to go and get it. That's fine. Send him from there. He's keen to go and get it. And then she sends him. Very enthusiastic. You can see he's desperately keen to please his mummy. So, I mean, I would say relatively in terms of his training, you're probably quite far on. Yeah. Uh, which is great. So you can, you know, there's not many, not many people we see who've got a one-year-old cocker can happily walk them away from a dummy without having to really get on their case. You know, I was expecting you to have to go and him kind of be a bit yeah. more. And he just quite um, willingly just kind of came with you. Now, there's a couple of things that, that he's, he's done, it, you've done slightly differently. When he was down there and you sent him for a straight retrieve, he was just staring at that retrieve. And you sent him, okay? When he went up there, he looked at the retrieve, he looked at you and he's like, please, can I go, mummy? If you're training a dog for, if yeah. you're training a dog for sort of top level kind of competitions, yeah. you always want them to be slightly on the edge. So you want them to be Usain Bolt and their starter blocks. I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. And they go, when you're training a gun dog, you want, you want him to look at where the retrieve goes and then always look back at you. Because a dog that's looking at you is a dog that's asking permission, okay? So, so he, you throw the retrieve, he looks, and then he looks back at you and says, when would you like me to get it, mummy? He's allowed to keep checking it's there and looking back and checking it's there. But we, what, at this stage, what we don't want is them sort of staring obsessively at a dummy, because what will happen is, is um, he's staring at a pheasant on a shoot and someone goes, Georgia, did you see where that other bird went? And you'll go, oh yeah, it's just over there. And your j, just will be jet, and he'll go. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Whereas if he's looking at you and he's waiting for your body language to change and send him, yeah. then, then he'll, when you say, oh yeah, it's just over there, he'll know that that doesn't mean jet, go and fetch it. Yeah. Because it'll be clear. But if you imagine he's just sitting there going, he's waiting, he's listening for jet, 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 jet. And he hears just, oh, that'll do, and he's off. Okay? Yeah, he's so we're, just by getting him to look at you for every single retrieve, it's going to just make him a more, like, it's just going to keep, and he's very attentive to you, so that's great, but it'll just keep him more focused on you uh, longer term. Because obviously when you get them onto game, yeah. and there's a pheasant hits the deck over there and runs off, you know, his enthusiasm for it is going to be more in, more than it is on a dummy. So the more you control you've got on a dummy, yeah. the, the better he's going to be. So, so just throw one short and one long at the moment until we just see how he copes with the sort of exercise, and then we'll go from there. And so again, this is really important where he looks at you. Now, do you see he's slightly, lit. he's very much facing that one. Yeah. Okay, so I would take, I'd take a pace that way. You, you take a pace that way. Okay, and then put your hand out that way. So put your hand out already. Now you've got, now tell him to go and get it. Because now you've, do you see what I mean? You've... <laughs> he's just confused, that's okay though. Good boy. Good boy. No. Good boy. Okay, now walk him to heel back, back, just back to here. Yeah. So he's still got his eye on that other one. Sit him down. So we're going to make it more complicated for him now. I want you to throw that one quite a decent distance that way, back towards the, the basketball hoop and your, and your... Right, now I want you to do the same thing. Just when he looks at you, just take a pace that way so that you adjust his body language. And now put your arm out that way and send him for that one. Be re Good boy. Ah, ah, yeah. ah. So one of the one of the main reasons for throwing that one further is is he ran out this way perfectly. He picked it up and then he's on his way back and he's oh look I can see that one. But it's giving you time to stop him. Okay, if that other one had only been at the end of your shadow, he's dropped them, he's messed around, and you're like oh shit. Now sometimes what I'll do in this in this scenario is um if I've got a dog that's really willful and trying to get it wrong, don't worry don't worry about him too much. Uh, if I've got a dog that's really willful and trying to get it wrong. I'll actually throw it just over a fence. So I would have moved back down to the gate and I'd have thrown the other one over the fence. So if he went the wrong way with the dummy in his mouth, 
he wouldn't yeah. have got it. He wouldn't have had any success. So I'm yeah. slightly just defeating him by by just being a bit smarter than him. Does that make sense? Yeah. But by throwing it further, normally with a biddable dog, by throwing it a bit further, it, it does the same the same job because it's allowing you an extra 10, 15 yards just to get hold of him. And the other thing to do is when he's coming back in with that one, is get yourself out in front of him. Yeah. So you're here going, good boy, good boy, and you're just taking the distraction of that away from him. Okay? Yeah. But yeah, he handled that pretty well. So that's, that's great. Just from the point of view of the fact, I think it's probably about 23 degrees. I've got <laughs> sweat pouring off my head, which everybody I'm sure wants to know. Uh, and he's going to get hot is, is probably, that's enough. But I mean, generally everything you're doing is, is definitely, you know, everything's going in the right direction. A few little tweaks. And I think he's going to turn into an awesome little dog because he's very attentive. And this is what you want. Like, no. is this constant, like looking at, you know, it's something that people question me about a lot. They're like, oh, my dog doesn't look at me like it looks at you or your dogs yeah. look at you all the time. It's conditioning. Okay. George has conditioned him. Yes, naturally, he's probably a nice little chap. And he wants to look at look at everyone, but he's been conditioned by Georgia to that nothing happens in his life unless he looks at mum and asks permission. Because a dog that's looking at you is a dog that's asking permission. Uh, so, so that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Work hard. I look forward to seeing him in the future when he's an awesome little gun dog. Remember, you get out what you put in, and we'll see you next time.